In this video, I'm going to show you some packet tracer tips and tricks. Please make sure that you go through this video so that you learn these tips and tricks. They will be especially beneficial when you use simulation mode in Packet Tracer. Now I'm not going to cover everything. Cisco have this course, Introduction to Packet Tracer. So if you really want to learn how to use Packet Tracer, then this is a great course to take. It's a free course once again, well worth your time taking this course if you want to learn the ins and outs of Packet Tracer. In my course, I'm not trying to teach you how to use all the features of Packet Tracer. We're just going to use some of the features that help us get started and help us better build networks in Packet Tracer. So you can launch this course on Cisco's website and go through the course. It once again covers a lot of features available in Packet Tracer. So there's an introduction to Packet Tracer. You can learn about the user interface and how to use simulation mode. We're going to use simulation mode as part of this course, and I want to show you two important tricks before you use simulation mode. But if you want to learn more about simulation mode, once again, have a look at this course. You can also learn about the physical view in Packet Tracer, as well as assessments, which we're going to use in this course. You can learn about IoT, controlling smart devices, and various other options in Packet Tracer, such as creating and programming objects, whole bunch of options are available in Packet Tracer. We're only using a small subset of the features in Packet Tracer because that's all we need to build networks using Packet Tracer. We're concentrating on the configuration of the devices within Packet Tracer rather than learning about all the features in Packet Tracer. But that being said, very important. Please go to Options, Preferences when you start a Packet Tracer. And notice this tab, Miscellaneous. Please check this checkbox, buffer filtered events only. That will save you from having problems where the packet tracer buffers are overrun when you use simulation mode. If you don't know what that is, don't worry. Take my advice and check this option. Under interface, there are various options where you can show device model labels, show device name labels. You can show port labels in the logical workspace. Something that I find very useful is under font, I make the fonts a lot bigger for the CLI. So I'll set this to 16 as an example. You can change the font used. You can change the size of the menus if you prefer. But for me, the most important option is changing the CLI. I'm going to click Apply, and then I'm going to close this down. Now, we'll create a lot of networks together. But I just want to show you that we have routers, switches, hubs, wireless devices and firewalls as some of the network devices available in Packet Tracer. Packet Tracer is very versatile, fantastic software, free once again from Cisco. It does have some limitations, but it allows you to build a lot of networks. Under end devices, we have laptops and PCs as an example. So I could add a laptop to my topology and add a PC to my topology. I could go back to network devices and I could select a switch as an example. And I could add a 3650 switch to the topology. So clicking on connections, I could grab what's called a straight through copper cable, and I could connect the fast ethernet cable on my PC to a gigabit interface on my switch. Again, don't worry too much about this if you don't know much about networking. We'll be discussing a lot of these options in the upcoming videos. I'll grab another cable, select another interface on the switch, say gigabit 102, connect that to the PC on fast ethernet zero. And what I'll do on this specific switch is click on it and I'll drag a power supply into the switch. This switch requires that you add a power supply to start it up. And if I click on CLI, I'll be able to see the switch boot up. Again, I'll cover a lot of these details later. What I want to point out, however, is that we have a real-time mode. This is stuff happening in real time. And then we have simulation mode, 
which allows us to see what's happening behind the scenes. We can actually see the traffic sent on the network when we use simulation mode. So I'm gonna go back to real time and I'm gonna click on this PC and I'm gonna to go to config fast ethernet zero. What I'm gonna do is configure an IP address on this PC and give it a subnet mask as follows. Again, don't worry too much about this. I just need to configure an IP address to show you one of the options in Packet Tracer. If I go back to desktop, command prompt, this gives me a prompt similar to what you'll have in Windows. And if I ping an IP address like this, the PC will send traffic into the network, but I don't actually see anything except the results. If I configure this laptop with an IP address, and again, don't worry too much about what I'm doing here. I'm gonna explain all of these options in a lot of detail in a moment. So I've given this laptop an IP address that ends in two. When I go back to the desktop and ping that IP address again, I get a reply from the laptop. Ping basically just sends a message into the network saying, are you there? In the first case, because I hadn't configured the laptop with an IP address, the request timed out. In other words, I know that the laptop wasn't there. In the second example, when I pinged the laptop, I got a reply back. So basically I'm saying, hello, are you there? And then the laptop is replying back saying, yes, I'm here. And that's why I get a reply back from the laptop because I configured the laptop with the IP address that the PC is pinging. So it worked in the second example. But notice I'm just seeing the results. I'm not actually seeing what's going on on the network. But if I go to simulation mode, what I'll see now is when I ping the PC, it basically pauses Packet Tracer and I see a packet. Now I'm not seeing all the options. So I'm gonna click here to pop that window out. And notice we can see a whole bunch of protocols. So what we're gonna do is click show all none and notice a visible events is now set to none. If I click that again, I'm gonna see a whole range of protocols. We'll talk about what protocols are later, but essentially we're gonna see a whole bunch of information which may cause problems when you run Packet Tracer simulations. You're basically gonna overrun Packet Tracer with messages. So click on this option, show all none, and then go to edit filters and only select the protocols that you need for that specific simulation or demonstration. So if you're following me or you're trying things, only select specific protocols. I know that ping uses ICMP as an example. So I'm gonna select that protocol and click close. And now I'm gonna double click here to pop the window back in there. I see this specific packet and I can click next to send it into the network. I could also do that by popping this window out and clicking play or click this option to go to the next event in the network. So notice the packet is now being sent to this PC. If I click back, it basically takes me back to the second event. Back takes me to the first event. So second event, third event, I can click on the packet to see what's going on. A lot of detail here, don't worry too much about it. We've got OSI model, we've got inbound PDU or protocol data unit and outbound protocol data unit. We're gonna be spending a lot of time discussing what these options mean. Don't worry too much about it once again for the moment. So big advice, if you don't see the options to unselect protocols, click on this little window to pop the simulation panel out. Click show all or none. So we've got all protocols selected now. I'm gonna show no protocols and go to edit filters and I'm only gonna select the protocols that I wanna see, which could be say ARP and ICMP and I'm gonna close this window and now I'll only see those two protocols. So if I go back to real time, that ping on the PC is now completed. If I do that again, but before I press enter, I'm gonna click on simulation. Notice it's remembered the events that I wanna filter and I press enter again, I see ICMP. Now I'm not seeing ARP here and there's a reason for that which I won't go into right now, 
basically the PCs remembered information. So I don't see ARP messages. But I don't want to confuse you at this point, so I'll discuss that later. In a lot of the labs, I'm going to tell you to uncheck a whole bunch of protocols and only enable certain protocols. So I'll help you through this. But you can always enable certain protocols if I'm showing you those in a demonstration and you don't see them. Okay, so my big tips are to go to Options, Preferences, Miscellaneous. Make sure that you've clicked this option to buffer filtered events only. On the Interface option, if you uncheck this, always show port labels in logical workspace. You won't see the interface names in your topology. So if they're missing, go to Options, Preferences, and select this option. Again, if you're struggling with Packet Tracer, it doesn't make sense. You're not sure how the user interface works, etc. I suggest that you go through this course on Cisco's website. At least go through some of the modules. So go through Chapter 1 to Chapter 4 so that you learn the basics of the Cisco Packet Tracer interface. You can always ask questions, but this will save you a lot of time and a lot of frustration if you understand the basics of Cisco Packet Tracer.